Are you a Christian woman entrepreneur looking to increase your income, your impact, and your faith? Are you ready to dream the impossible, knowing that with God, all things truly are possible? It's time to create divine millionaire momentum while keeping God as your CEO. Join me, Ali Porter, your Christian connector concierge. And me, Elise Smith, your Christian business strategist, as we unite our shows to bring you a dynamic and faith-infused experience. In this inspiring show, you'll gain access to powerful insights, biblical business strategies, and the real-life stories of Christian women entrepreneurs focused on 10xing their income, their impact, and their faith just like you. Discover how to unlock your full potential, kick that inner dream stealer to the curb, embrace a divine wealth mindset, and reach the goals that God has placed on your heart. Allie and I will guide you on a journey to not only reach your goals, but also strengthen your relationship with God as your ultimate CEO. With Divine Millionaire Momentum, the sky is not the limit. It's just the beginning. Tune in, dream big, and partner with God to make the impossible possible. Your journey to divine success starts here. Welcome to the Divine Millionaire Momentum Show. We are super excited to have you guys join us today. And we're going to be talking about a topic that I think is really going to pique your interest, especially because it's going to help you to be more productive in your business and in your life. And we have an incredible guest that we're about to introduce you to today. So Allie, you want to take it from here? Yes, of course I do. Hi, Susie. Oh my gosh. We are so excited to have you on the show. Um, So guys, this is Susie Hillegas, and she is a dear friend, but she's also an amazing, amazing leader in the business space. And so I'm going to introduce her really quickly, and then we're going to dive in. So I'm, oh, I cannot wait. I've been waiting for this for a long time. So yay. Okay. Um, So a little bit about Susie. Susie empowers overwhelmed women to get unstuck in their work their time, and their finances. She um, really wants to help people do that deep work. She's been married for 11 years, and she has a nine-year-old son, and she's walked with God into many different adventures. The last few years have been the biggest, and she really cares deeply about women and helping them to provide for their family and also she allows them to have that encouragement and really allowing them to get to the core of who they are and building their legacy and their business. And so with that, Susie, I want to, before we dive into the questions and stuff, I want to just kind of get a little bit of your background. Like what made you decide to go this route? What was it that really, um, spoke to you and what did God tell you when it came to starting your business and really being able to, you know, make a difference in the world? Yeah. Uh, So I was a teacher. There we go. I was a teacher for 20 years. And so I know that I already help. I care about people, right? I don't care about people unless you're a teacher. And then I was an executive assistant and then I had a baby and I stayed home (laughs) with a baby. And just about two years ago, my husband and I decided it was time for me to kind of re-enter the workforce and kind of have my own thing. And as often with life, we jump in with both feet into everything. So I started a freelance business and then I also decided to get a master's degree (laughs) because why not? Right. (laughs) And over the, over the summer, our master's program sent us a list of, Hey, these would be great books to kind of prep you to, get ready for this program. And so me being the studious student that I am, I'm a lifelong learner. So I I had been doing freelance work for the first year of my online business, just not totally sure how to engage the world yet, but in people, right? Then I read Deep Work by Cal Newport and it radically changed my work life, my home life, everything, but it's a very high level book. (laughs) And if you know me, the joke is that I swallow books. And so I'm always recommending books to people, always. But this was a book that I knew that I could not, I couldn't recommend to my girlfriends at the park. (laughs) It wasn't one of those. And so I started doing deep work on my own and realized, oh, I've been doing this for 20 years. I've been helping people do hard projects in their class or in their life or in their business. 
I just didn't know the name of it. So I gave myself the official title of a deep old coach and developed a, a, a few free things to kind of help. I care deeply about women and helping women get the work done. I'll help men too, but women are my passion. And um, I also created a workbook just because some of us are slower and self-paced and, you know, we, we go to these seminars and take all these notes and then we get home and oh, what do we do? And so I just, I kept imagining one of my dear friends, actually, who's an executive woman. I just kept imagining her at her desk trying to implement deep work well. And that's what the workbook is, is that process. And wow. so that's how I ended that's up here. Amazing. <laughs> oh, I love that. I love that. And I love the fact that you allowed something that really like radically changed you, you allowed it to shape kind of what you decided to do. And you realized, oh, I have a neck for this. Oh, I'm actually, I've actually been doing this my whole life. Like I just didn't realize it. And that's really the spirit being like, all right, Susie, let's rock and roll, you know, like let's do the thing that you're really good at. And I love that. I love that. Um, and I'm so grateful that you said, yes, I'm so grateful that you decided like, yes, I'm going to do this and I'm going to make, I'm going to make it a priority. So I love it. I love it. All right, Elise, do you want to start us off? Um, yeah. Actually, no, I'm going to start us off. Then you can go to the next one. Sorry. <laughs> You're fine. Okay. So my first question for you, Susie, tell us how you help women to get unstuck in their work and life. Um, so we, t you talked about like your business and what you're doing now, but what specifically, what, what things do you do to help them get unstuck? Give us kind of a brief overview. Kind of a bigger picture. Yeah. The, the <laughs> motto of my business is small, small momentum uh, in the right direction. And I, I have learned so much from others, right? Like that's, that's how the world is designed. That's how God set it up is we mentor each other and we, and we learn from each other. And so I, I care a lot. I care a lot about the work that you do, whether it's in your home or in your business, because that's just what most of us spend most of our time on. I care a lot about time management and someone who has always, I just think in time <laughs> and I've learned that a lot of people don't. So I, 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 I have several people that I'm on their quick time speed dial. Like they know something keeps, they keep being late or they keep messing up and they call me and we talk through like, well, are you doing this? No, are you doing this? So I care about time. And then I care about finances. I care about how people get, we ourselves have struggled with, with debt and no debt and debt and no debt and the frustration of that. And so I, I, I want to help, I want to help women get unstuck with that as well, because there's so much of how we think about things that aren't actually true. So it's kind of a mixed, um, one of the things I was struggling with when I was doing freelance work is everyone kept saying, well, what exactly do you do? Or what type of people do you work with? And I really struggled with that answer because they work with women. <laughs> like, <laughs> we, you know, it kind of depends. Maybe your work life is doing great, but you, you can't seem to get your kids ready on time to get them out the door for school. And that makes you late to work. And then you show up lesser, you know? And, and so there's, I, I care deeply for the woman who we all are doing so much and yet we don't give ourselves credit. We feel like we're failing on all the things and it's so not true. And so it, I love to just start a conversation and right away you can hear like, oh, you hate going to the grocery store or you don't know how to stand up for, it's been so interesting with this deep work. People don't know how to set boundaries around their time and work. And so I've just enjoyed kind of getting to do all of those different things in this big umbrella. Wow. That's awesome. That is so cool. And I love the fact that you are not putting yourself in a box. Like you're saying, Hey, like, yeah, I work with this, but then I can also help you with this and I can help you with this. And, and I think really you're listening to what they're needing and fulfilling the need based on your expertise and what you do. Um, and I love it. I think it's amazing. Well, awesome. we've all had that experience, right? Where we've, we've asked a question 
and we get a response and in our head we're thinking yeah that's not it at all <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. that's all right, Lisa, you want to ask her the next yeah. question yeah, absolutely so um you talked about like the umbrella of services and different ways that you help people and and one thing that really stands out to me about you uh, about you Susie is that you really care like you truly care about the people that you're serving and not even just the people you're serving but as I've seen you interact with, you know, team members and other people, like you care about everyone around you. You truly have the pure love of Christ inside of you. And I think that that's one thing that sets you apart from, you know, virtual assistants and from coaches and from all those other people who might be doing even just similar things to what you're doing. Um, so talk to me about deep work. Why is that so important, especially when it comes to productivity? So what I learned from Cal Newport was his challenge was if you if you learn how to put deep work into your life, it will help it'll help you have better focus in the rest of your life. And I don't know about you guys, but especially as I started this master's degree and continuing to work from home, I just I just felt all over the place. <laughs> it's just and I you know, and I, I was doing all the things, but I just I, I felt so confuddled. That a word befuddled. So I, <laughs> I, as I, as I dug back through the deep work and kind of worked through the steps of how to make it be so, I realized I needed to set aside a specific amount of time every week because I am a calendar person, because I am a time person. I kept making the mistake, and he says this in the book, but I kept making the mistake of, oh, I'll, I'll figure out a time. And it never happened. But as I worked through the steps and as I made a solid commitment to time and did the different things that he said, I really saw that these other focuses, I became more focused everywhere else. And you know how you do something for a little while? Cause you're like, is it, is it really this, <laughs> is it really this thing? Or is it just life finally settled down, which never happens, but you know, and, but as I kept kind of testing it and doing it, and like I said, I, I started with work and then my master's program started. And so then I set some deep work blocks for my master's program. And it's been so great because my family now knows it, it was hard at first because they'd want to interrupt or ask, or, but now they know, oh, like Saturday morning, mom gets up early and she'll, I make a quick breakfast for everyone. And then I disappear till about 11 o'clock because I have to write a paper or do homework or whatever. And, but then, you know, at 11 o'clock, they have me for the rest of the day. And it's, it's been amazing. I, I'm just I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful I tripped across that book. <laughs> and then I've, and then I've dug into it deeper and I've really been seeing the effects with other women too, that it, it really is helping. And I love that. I, I think the more you're willing to do the deep work, because the deep work is the hard work. It's the stuff that people just, they don't necessarily want to do because it, it takes a lot out of you. It's not just like, oh, I'm just going to like go learn something or I'm going to go like be on the surface of whatever. It's like, I'm going to peel back the layers. I'm going to like figure out like why I'm doing this. How can I do this better? you know, and, and not just that, but like, I'm also going to get real with myself. Like, I'm going to be honest with myself and be like, yeah, maybe I struggle with this, or maybe, you know, I could be better in this area, or maybe like, I don't love myself enough, you know, like whatever the thing is. Right. And I love the fact that you've made it your life's work to, to really focus on that, to, to make that a, a huge focus. And, but the other thing about deep work is it's scary to do by yourself. It's scary to like, see that, you know, and be able to know what to do with it. And so you being there to be able to link arms with people and being able to really um, be there for them in the deep work is so helpful. And so it, it feels like they're not alone and you're the perfect person to do it with because you're just like, like Elisa was saying, like you have the light of Christ with you and it's just so beautiful. And, um, and, and I think that the more that people realize that it is important. It's so important to do the deep work as it is to succeed in your career or even in your, your parenting or your, uh, I don't know, name, whatever it is that you're, that you're working on right now, the deep work within yourself is just as important as all of those things. Would you agree? 
on I w- and, and they're linked. And so, mm-hmm. so the, to, you know, someone asked like, you know, how does, how does deep work and God fit together and God designed us to work. And, and so often I've been reading studies about people being dissatisfied at work. Cause I've just been kind of curious, you know, and it's interesting that a lot of people are in the field that they want to be in, but because they're not doing that hard, they're not listening to do that hard work. They're really dissatisfied with their job. Mm-hmm. And it's when, and, and it's again, we're so distracted in this, in this culture that we live in and it's no one's fault. It's just the reality of the culture that we live in. And, and so it takes a lot of work to really push aside the, the quick, the quick, you know, we all have, like, it's so easy to do the quick jobs, right? But those aren't the fulfilling jobs. And that's the thing is if people will sink their teeth into it, they find if they, if they, especially if you do it, I find three weeks, if you do it three weeks in a row, by that third week, they have caught hunger and that like, got that project done. Or their boss notices. I had a friend who she was she was trying to write these really hard memos for work, and it, they just worked hard for whatever reason. And but she got them done. And she came back to me and she was like, "My boss was so pleased. He was like, these were so well written, and you could tell that you really worked hard on these. And it and it's like that's why we do the deep work because it yeah. just like you said, it helps move or whatever our thing is. Yeah, it moves the needle. Now, kind of tying that back to. Um, because because so we were talking about deep work but how does being aligned with god in the deep work like what does that look like and why is that different than just oh i'm going to you know do the deep work that everybody talks about or whatever how 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 does that help and like what does that look like to align with god in that and i think that's where the difference is from what you do to maybe what someone else does that doesn't include god in that deep work I think it's twofold. One, as a believer, you're, you're hopefully, hopefully you're, you're asking God, what should I be doing? And what, what should my life look like today? Or what should my work life look like today? Or what matters most or whatever. Right. And so the beauty of doing deep work is that you're inviting God into that space with you. You're inviting him into that deeper place and asking him, okay, I I know I'm distracted. (laughs) I know that there's other things that I want to be doing. I know that I'm having a hard time with this, like whatever the list is, right? Because we all have the same list, but inviting him in. And I find one of the things I'm learning in my master's program is that our faith is embodied. Our faith is not just something that we think about. Our faith is what we say, do, think, who we are. And this is such, it it can almost be a spiritual practice of I'm going to go do work for my business. And I'm going to honor God with my time and with my focus and with my presence. I think that's the key thing that I have learned is my presence, my presence to my work, my presence to my family, my presence to myself. And I, if you had asked me a year ago, like, Hey, you know, are you present when you show up? I would have been like, no. (laughs) Love the honesty there. (laughs) Like I, I had no idea. I, I'm so much more focused now than I ever used to be. And it again, it's it's been the you know it's been the combination of the two, right? It wasn't just deep work. It was as I dove into deep work, God met me there, and and we, he and I together, have accomplished so much within myself, within my family, and within my work. And it does start with you, right? I mean, I think that that's that's the most important thing is like, as you're talking about productivity and how deep work helps you with your productivity, and you were saying that it's going to help you in in everything that you're doing. I think that the the crux of that is that everything that we are held back in life, like, you know, let's say that you're procrastinating on a project or something like that. It's all an inner block. 
right? It's not, even if we think that it's an external block of, oh, I don't have the knowledge or I don't have the, the money or the time or something. It's all within inside of us. We have everything that we need. It's just uh, tapping into that. And I love how you do that with God. But if you really go those deep layers and you say, okay, well, I'm procrastinating on this project. Why is that? And if you go those five layers deep and you kind of get into that deep work, like you're talking about, and, I, and we'll get to some tips here in just a second, but you'll see that you're the one, <laughs> like you not, you're the problem, but you know, it's the way that you're thinking about it. And it's the things that are holding you back inside that are affecting your external. Wouldn't you say that? Absolutely. And it, I would just think of a coin, right? One side of the coin is, oh, I'm the problem. But the flip side of the coin is I'm also the solution. Oh, I love that. And so, you know, it's just choosing to, you know, I'm going to flip the coin keeps landing on heads. I'm going to flip it to tails today. And I, I am going to figure this out. Yeah. But, yeah. Yes. Ah, oh, that's so cool. It's so cool. And, and so, you know, I'm, I'm definitely on the strategy side, right? Like we've been talking about deep work as like this, this thing. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> um, but, uh, but let's get down to like the nitty gritty. What are the tips or what are the strategies that you help people to incorporate um, into their routine to be more productive through that deep work? Like give us the peek behind the curtain. What do you do? Absolutely. So, so I've created two freebies to, to help with that exact thing, right? Cause we all love a free something. And the first one that I, well, I, so the first one that I created is it's an intro. It's just a one page sheet that you can download for free. And what I did is I just, des I designed my workbook is D E E P. So it's deep, but each, each letter stands for a piece of the process to do it. And that you already touched on the first one. The first one is decide. <laughs> you just decide. I'm going to dive in. I'm going to figure this out. And, and that first step is pulling out your calendar and picking a date. And, and again, the, the sheet is sort of a taste of what the workbook is, right? The workbook is a 25-page document. But and it's pretty and lovely because we all hate boring documents that aren't going to look at. So... <laughs> Because I know it's a hard topic. So I was like, how can I make it as appealing as, as possible? But um, so D is, is to dive in, check your, figure out your calendar, figure out like just, even if it's not the best day, just, just pick something and start. And then the second E is to eliminate distraction. And he, in the book, he talks about the shiny things and I target this, they had these disco ball cups and I bought it to remind me myself to not chase after the shiny thing. Because as you eliminate distractions, I think the thing that surprises everyone is they, is they really decide, I'm going to do this, right? So they pick time on their calendar, they've eliminated the outside distractions, and then they sit down at their And there's so many distractions right here. There's email and notes and open tabs and Amazon. <laughs> all the things right and so it's really recognizing like yes it's kind of it's an outward and an inward and an inward like there's two inwards almost there's there's outside my computer and then myself you guys I can I have to I literally have to put my phone on like airplane mode when I'm in deep work because the dinging of what of important things right could be my husband or no like I have told my family I'm not available during these times and I, I have to honor that. Mm. And that, mm, that's been a big one. So the D is dive in. E is eliminate distraction. The second E it's twofold because they're both important. And I was like, it's one more important than the other. And I think some people will lean more towards one than the other. So I put them both. It's um, to experiment and to evaluate. And so like I'm an early morning person. I wake up the crack of dawn. And so I thought, oh, deep work at like 5 a.m. is that's going to be my ticket. No, <laughs> it was so bad <laughs> because I was thinking about my whole day. I was thinking about like, did I, you know, does my, do I have enough bread to make sandwiches for my son for school? And, and, and so, and so I have found for me personally, deep work is best in the middle of the day uh, from like 11 to two. I eat a really early lunch. And I plow through and then at two o'clock, I, I usually go run errands or like I really get away from my desk in my house and it's, it's really helped. But so experiment because just because you 
pick a time doesn't mean the time. And then we're gonna, and then P is project. And so it's really important to experiment and to evaluate the project piece because the other mistake I've seen people make is they do all three, right? They dive in, they pick a time, they eliminate the distractions, they've, they've kind of played with it a little bit, and they pick a project of like cleaning out their email inbox. Or, you know, and, and you wanna pick a project that it's intense. Like this week I've been working on my taxes. That's what I've been doing during deep work. It is, and the other mistake that people make with picking a project is taxes are a great example is there's so much you have to collect to actually do the work, right? And so what my recommendation is, is so you pick a day, right? But you spend those extra five, 10 weird minutes throughout your day beforehand, collecting the project, like collecting the pieces. So that when your, when your block comes, you can sit down and do the work. So. Oh, I love that. I love how you have it just like these are the exact steps to follow and everybody needs to get that freebie. <laughs> oh, and I, I have another freebie I have too, because is it's a momometer. It's an interrupt momometer. <laughs> and <laughs> again, I made it for myself. Christmas break was coming. And, and because I'm in my office a lot, I'm in my office for work and I'm in my office for school. And my son said, he goes, I never, the door is off and shut. He's like, I never know, like, can I come in? Can I? And I was, and I, I really, that was a very legitimate complaint. And so, so yeah, if you, if you download it, it explains, like I gave you verbiage to even say to your family <laughs> and even my husband, like he'll come home from work early. And if it's on, do not disturb. He, he doesn't, he just, he knows that I'll come out when I'm done with a call or what, you know, whatever the thing is that I'm doing, it has been in charge just game changer oh my game changer it's so, so simple i made it in canva you know like <laughs> <laughs> i oh, love oh. that i love that yeah. uh, well and the other thing that i wanted to say too cuz i know we talked about at the beginning we were talking about the deep work and like the hard stuff that you have to go through but i love how you brought in just like the projects that you need to get done you know like mm -hmm. it's not necessarily like it's a combination of like figuring out like who you are and what you want and stuff but it's also the stuff like life stuff that you need to do and I loved how you brought up taxes like that is something that people may not like look at as deep work but that is such a deep work thing but look at it as like you're working through these things and when you can do that that makes your life better it makes you better it like you're able to move forward in your life like in your business in your parenting in your marriage in you know what I'm saying I love that I oh so good so good Wow, Susie, this flew by. <laughs> I wish we had more time to dive into all the things. The last question I want to ask you is, obviously, the name of this show is the Divine Millionaire Momentum Show, right? So what does millionaire momentum mean to you? That's why we're friends, because you were the one who introduced me to it. And um, I knew, so we, we moved here to Kansas City two years ago to get some momentum in our life. We needed some positive momentum. And then when I met you and I was like, millionaire momentum, I've never thought about being a millionaire. And you were like, well, actually it's about, it's about reaching a million women too. And that sang to my heart <laughs> because I've never put a number to how many women do I want to impact in my life? But that is something um, that is important to me and that matters to me. And that sold me. I was like, I'm in, I'm all the way in. Mm. And so as I, I've even gotten emotional about it, but as I, as I have been developing my work, it is those, those million women that I have in mind. And, and that's the goal is to make their lives better, to help them realize they're doing so much. They're doing such a good job. And, and we, and we're here to come alongside of them to, to continue to encourage, them, continue to help them. Mm. I love that Susie. And I, I know you're right on your way. I mean, you, you have this light that just radiates outward. And I know that your mission and what you're trying to accomplish is already happening and is continuing to happen. And I love being able to see it 
Like I get a front row seat to everything that you're doing and how you're doing it. And it's such a blessing. And so I, I really want those of you listening and watching um, the show. I want you to reach out to Susie. I want you to go to her directory. The links will be below this video. Um, go to her directory listing, reach out to her, connect with her on her socials, get her freebies, please. You will want to have Susie in your life because she can truly help you do that deep work, whether it's a big project that you have to work on, or it's like discovering who you are. Um, she's there for you and she can help you with that. So allow her to do that. Um, anything else you wanted to say, Elise, before we close and no. or Susie? I think this has been great. Thank you so much, Susie, for just helping us to see it in a different light and showing us that it is possible. You can have that time for just yourself and have that mama meter and make it a fun thing for your family. Like you're just incredible. And we just appreciate having you here today. Thank you. And I just want to say that no matter which freebie you sign up for, I've made it that you get so like in the initial sign up, you get the one that you sign up for, but then an, an email comes immediately that allows you the second one too. So don't feel like you have to choose because you'll get both. You're amazing. <laughs> I love it. Sweet. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us on this episode of Divine Millionaire Momentum Show. We can't wait to see you on the next one. And Susie, thanks so much for being here with us today. We'll see you next time. Thank you for joining us on this inspiring journey of divine millionaire momentum. Don't miss out on connecting with other Christian ladypreneurs and building valuable relationships. Join our free virtual networking events every Thursday at m2networking.com. Ready to take your success to the next level? Be sure to book a call with us to explore the incredible resources, tools, and opportunities that we have to empower your journey at m2networking.com forward slash call. Remember, with God, all things are possible. Until next time, stay inspired, believe in Christ, and receive the wealth and prosperity that God has for you.